Hello everybody, welcome to Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around Fantasy Premier League. My name's Serge. And my name is James. And it's Tuesday, Tuesday the 26th of May. Two arms, two legs, back to sanity, back to normality, back to podcasting. Off we go again. How's it going, James? Good, mate. Good, good. I, I, I couldn't believe how much of a state I was on Sunday. I was doing random things like turning lights on. She'd be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know why I did that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like mentally and physically. Oh, it's gone, mate. It's gone. We have a, a box where we have nappies in as well. So I opened the box yep. up. Went back to him. I hadn't got a nappy. I don't know. But, <laughs> but I did nothing else in this box other than nappies. I've opened it. Gone there, left it open, not taking a nappy. Oh, just, oh, uh, I was all over the place, mate. <laughs> that, that would have been good content for uh, Twitter or YouTube. Watching James change a nappy after her, having spent 24 hours awake with me. That was incredible. Um, yeah, my, my Sunday was all right. But I got home at, what, quarter to seven? We got home around then. Yeah. Um, everyone in my house was fast asleep. So there was no, like, welcoming committee. And my kids get up quite early. Half six is fairly normal for them to be awake um but everybody was zonked out but um bits and pieces that, I, that food that i hadn't eaten in the fridge went upstairs into my bedroom missus is there asleep one of my sons had managed to get into my bed so i was like right okay i'm off into the spare room to sleep now great um put my pajamas on went over to give my wife a kiss she, she took one sniff of me I said you stink because <laughs> what my the- said as well when, I, when she woke me up next morning she went Get a fucking shower. <laughs> yeah, she's doing a shower. I was like, I don't, I, I do, but I don't. I said, I'm going to sleep for 20, like a couple of hours first and then I'll have a shower. And that's what happened. I ended up sleeping through till about 10 30 or 11. Um, ate, uh, ate some food, had a shower, freshened up, went back to sleep again. I lasted till about four o'clock and then I was awake for the rest of the day. And then the normality and then opening Twitter and just seeing the barrage of tweets and snapshots and people taking their own two minute video snippets out and reposting them. And I was like, oh, this is all a little bit too much. And then 9.30 rolled around and uh, it was time for the uh, Champ Man stream. So jumps in that for a little bit. Uh, I didn't engage in the chat that much, but I was watching the stream. And uh, these two idiots, Dave and uh, Andy, started their stream for nine minutes, were chatting away and didn't even turn it on. Yeah, I anyone, think anyone it, would have think they'd have been awake for 24 hours. I think the only reason <laughs> they even clucked at all that, that, that people weren't engaging in what they were saying about Derby County and Leeds and whatever was everyone in the chat was still talking about me and you. <laughs> yeah. Um, to, be, to, to Andy's credit, though, uh, he said he watched 14 hours. And there's so many people that watch 14, 15, 16, 17. The most I've seen is 19 hours, someone tweeted and said they The most I've seen hours. now is someone's watched a lot. Yeah, I had people... Not, not in consecutively in 24 yeah. hours in a row. But someone now has watched all of it. Mm. Do you know the thing... I mean, we'll touch, we're, we're talking about it now. I'll touch on it. When all said and done, and there's the, the um, absurdity of staying awake for 24 hours and live streaming and raising money for charity, there was some really fucking good content in there. Did you, not trust, did you not trust me on the planning, no, sir? No, it wasn't so much that, but when you get to 24 hours, the, the content's not the primary thing, right? Raising money for charity and the absurdity is the main thing of why we're doing it. And there's gains in between. And then the content is there to serve that purpose. But if you think about the topics we covered, some of them were deep. I mean, come on, Hillsborough. And gambling. I couldn't and even remember kind of that, right? So we obviously had Alex. We had, maybe on yeah. At, and the thing is, you know what? We got to that point um, at five. Marco and uh, Jacob were coming on, but we were in the middle of like this sp- deep spiritual conversation about Hillsborough. Yeah. I was like, how can you? We can't end this conversation to move on to more guests that we've got coming on because it was intense. It's only word to describe it. I couldn't even remember till I jumped back through because I kind of sent a thank you tweet out to all the guests yesterday saying like, here's where they started in, in the video and that. And it was only when I was jumping through afterwards and looking some of the comments and I was like, oh my God, we spoke about Hillsborough for about 15 minutes. Yeah. So I couldn't remember. Like you said to me, what, what did we discuss when like Tom Cantle come on and Andy, I ain't got a clue. Well, I know it was good thing, shit, right? but I ain't got so a clue. We, I mean, we, we spoke with Sham about gambling, right? That was a, another very deep, interesting topic. Tom, Tom, if you'll remember, came on and just literally told us all that he should be dead. Yeah, basically, yeah. And, and Brilliant speech. You, I remember you, the speech. Yeah. 
Yeah, completely. And when you factor in, and it's not just these guys, um, you could list the amount of fun and interesting and good conversations. And as well as that, then we had the absurdity of just banter as well with other people and stuff. So all in all, like if you had to create, strip out all of the fluffy bits that helped us get to 24 hours, there's still 18 to 20 hours of great content, in my opinion. And I know I'm biased, it's our own content, but I genuinely feel like there's a lot of good content in there. Well, no, and in this case, actually, the content is very much bought really by, by the guests. Yeah. Which, which is one of the reasons why on Sunday with us both dying, I mean, normally, we such kind of jokes on it on Friday was like, or Thursday, we won't do Monday. I was, like, Monday. What's, I was like, what's wrong with you? And then thinking about it, I was like, what are we going to put a people's poll out for this week? when there's like 25 of them sitting amongst that 24 hour stream, let me yep. point everyone in the right direction to them. So that's what we decided to do. I'm, for the first time I was pleased that we didn't record yesterday. I needed that. Mm. It was nice. And uh, yeah, so there we go. Um, just to give you an update, I'm just pulling up the page now. We obviously we've smashed our target of 5,000 pounds, including gift aid now. We're at 5,688 pounds and 50 pence for the NHS. My mum gave me a tenner yesterday, uh, so that topped it up a little bit. And there's a few more uh, to go on as well. My brother said he needed to jump on and what have you. So um, I think we'll get, but by the time all said and done, we'll get close to that £6,000 mark. So to beat it, I'm blown away. And I'm not going to name any individuals because I don't think it's fair to say, look, so-and-so gave this much money or that much money. There were some donations that I, I almost feel bad that people putting their hands into their pocket and like hundreds of pounds. Can, like, can I name two? Yeah. Um, one I'd mentioned on the stream at the time uh, was Ben Miller, mm -hmm. who I know made a, a large donation in the morning. And then when I came back in at like quarter to six, he made another large donation. And I didn't even know, but looking in the chat, he was like, my wife is going to kill me, mate. <laughs> mm -hmm. And also, um, Danny, sick of it, FPL, yeah. who yeah. Yeah. sent yeah. us the Decanio and Lendy King figures yeah. and that brilliant letter a few months back. And he basically, yeah, he cleared the total in one hit. I, he did. And I almost, I, 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 look, people will donate what they can afford. It's not my place to worry about other people's money, but I worry about other people's money. Do you know what I mean? Um, but there's so many that just jumped on and chucked 100 quid here. Yeah. In total, we've had over over 120 people donate and uh, over the course of this week we're going to be reaching out just saying thanks to everybody that did if you don't get a thanks from us then just know that it's for the sole reason that i can't um, find you you will either you've when you filled i don't in, know who you yeah, are exactly when you filled in the form if you just put for example andy and we don't have a handle or something there's a lot of andys oh. out there so we don't know who you are and well, also thanks, if, andy. You, if you exactly and if you did your uh, donation anonymously, Virgin Money don't give us the information of who they are. Like in the old days, I think Just Giving used to tell you the name and email address of everyone that donated. Virgin Money don't do that. And I understand why GDPR and all that. So we can't, but over 120 people, different people donating. Um, over 70 people joining the Patreon in that time as well. Mind blowing, mind blowing. Yeah, what about the other 500 that didn't donate? Go and have a look at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> James is joking. James is joking. You do what you can afford and you don't when you can't. Quite the right. Will come. I honestly feel like um, <laughs> I had it in a couple of messages and one DM particularly where people said, uh, well, one guy said, I've been milking you for years already. I've been milking you for years, so I thought I'd jump on now. Um, I honestly feel the generosity was driven by the output that we have done. And it's like we paid our dues and then people jumped on. And if that is the case, then I'm grateful and vind I feel vindicated in the work we've done. You know, we didn't get the money, but I feel vindicated in the work we've done. Uh, yeah, listen, I, I, not a trumpet out the bum, but yeah, when we finished, I, pride, mm. people kept saying, listen, you need to feel proud of yourself. So mm. yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the day itself, the actual 24 hours, um, I'm going to ruin it and make it sound like we can do it again was quite straightforward because of a little bit what you alluded to was the, the quality of the stuff that the guys were bringing in 
And every time you thought, oh, right, uh, you know, you think, oh, that one was great. The next one can't be as good or whatever. And it just, it just felt like it kept getting better and stuff. And everybody in the community, in terms of everyone, even like, if you, even if you couldn't donate, all the, there's so many names. You look through the chat all day and it's like, it feels like they're there all day. And just mm. looking back at that and knowing they were supporting from afar, like, we could, mm. we could see that at the time, even if we weren't mm. commenting on it, the money coming in, all the support, et cetera, through Twitter and the like. So that, that bit actually, we, I don't think you and I were ever at a stage where we were struggling mind and body wise. I was struggling through being drunk, but it was no thought of tapping out at any point or nah. anything like that. Nah. The hardest bit was putting that all together. It wasn't the doing it. And the it thing was, is, it was making sure if you looked at the thread I sent in terms of the confirming all the, all the times at the, at the end, I said, I don't just want to do a 24 hour stream. I want to do a great 24 hour stream. And, and that's what I think we did. Yeah. So there we go. Um, I, <laughs> I, the question has been put onto Twitter. Would you do it again? We'll, we'll address that when we get to the Twitter questions at the end. Um, so there we go. Um, Next what week. are we going to talk about today, James? Because... <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know what, Manchild had to come into the studio today to sort out the equipment. He's doing a bit of photography and some other bits and pieces. And he looked at it, he goes, oh, you tied it up. I was like, it's all gone. He goes, why don't you just leave it up? The setup, he's talking about mics and backdrops and all that kind of stuff. And I just looked at him and he was like, why? He goes, so you can do it again? It's like, you dickhead. Man. Yeah, you're all right, mate. Not going to happen. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what are we going to talk about? We were expecting some news from the FA and UEFA about what's going on with football. We haven't had any. Uh, are we going to touch on Livingston FC? Uh, there is a question about it. Yeah, um, so we mate. can do that in the Twitter Q&A. Um, and not only that, we've got a bit of champ man to chat about as well. Yeah, in terms of Premier League, I think it's just quite easy to sum up at the moment is... Obviously, the deadline to notify UEFA of what the intention was in terms of continuing the season or not was yesterday. I assume that UEFA have been notified to say there is an intention to finish the football season. Otherwise, they would have had to tell UEFA yesterday who they were putting forward for next season's European competitions in the way, say, Holland put through forward Ajax um, to go straight into the group stage, for example. So we assume that's happened because there's been nothing from the Premier League or UEFA. And I think what you're probably going to get is full announcements now tomorrow on Wednesday where the Premier League clubs are going to vote on returning to contact training. Looks highly likely that that's going to get passed through. Which and is then, next Monday from the 1st of June. And then we're going to be restarting football. I, I, I know the 19th of June keeps getting mentioned. I think that's ambitious because they couldn't organise a piss up in a brewery. Not that anybody could at the moment. And I think we'll be playing football again on June 26th which is a month today. That's a Friday. That's, yeah. Uh, there, there's, it's been long mentioned that they want to start with a Friday night game. Mm. So yeah, that's, I think that that's why the Friday is, dates are coming about. Realistic. Look, uh, it, it doesn't really make a difference when they play them, really, because it's not like any of us are going to be going to those games. They're going to be well, there is a thoughts. small difference in terms of, obviously, the later they start, really, they need to finish by the end of July, right? Mm. So... The later it gets, the tighter it gets. You're going to get two games a week, etc. If you ask me what's going to happen with FPL, I don't know. Stop asking me. I ain't got yep. a clue. Nobody knows. We'll probably all get a wild card to make us happy, so don't worry about the plan and stuff. I think, yes, we might be starting with one double game week of Man City, Arsenal, Villa, Sheffield United, mm -hmm. and I think that might be it. <laughs> Excuse me. But just because we start, don't mean we'll finish. Just saying. Mm. Yeah, um, I'm also... Uh, I mean, everything you've said, I echo. Obviously, we had more news from Boris yesterday that non-essential retail will be opening around the 15th of June as well. And they're working towards opening uh, opening the country up. So uh, I think you're right. I think you're spot on. We'll be starting around the 26th, 27th. I think we will finish it. I think we'll finish the season. And I'll tell you why. I think if, unless there is a spike and a, uh, an outbreak that's crazy, but if, say, for example, one player in a club test positive and then they test the rest of the squad and everyone else is negative they'll just isolate that one player so when fours and fives start getting um uh, affected then potentially it could be an issue but if there's only one or two players it's no different to harry kane picking up an injury or something right. along those lines so i think as long as they, and they'll be testing the shit out of the players we're also, honestly we're they'll also be at, testing so much we're also at a stage as well where 
most clubs are going to come back with fully fit squads. Yeah. So if you take like Spurs, that's like Kane, Bergwijn, Sun, military and all that, like they're all, they're all going to be hundred percent. I mean, on Dombly, obviously it'll be about 80%, but most people are going to be about hundred <laughs> percent when they return. Mm. And I think in the cases of like with Deeney at Watford, completely understand why he doesn't want to play, crack on. If Danny Rose mentally is not right to play, fine, crack on. And Golo Kante is another one. Doesn't want to go back. It's comfortable. He's lost people in his, his family through heart conditions and that. Doesn't wow. feel comfortable. So, yeah, they're just going to go without these players. And, uh, and the, the, I was listening to Caballero was speaking about Kante and he was saying, like, we support him not coming back. It's yeah. fine. If that's what he feels he needs to do, it's okay. And I think that's how it's going to be. I don't think there's going to be anything from fans even like you're letting us down or, you know, if Watford were to go down, I don't know if like some of their supporters would then feel differently at the end of the season. But I think generally speaking, if don't, if no one feels right about doing it, don't do it. For those who want to do it, play football. That seems to be where it's, where it's getting to now. I think the intensity of the games, like having 10 games in 30 days will help the, lack of interest uh, because games will come thick and fast if it was spread out one game a week over a two and a half month period I think people could lose interest quite easily but the intensity of trying to wrap it up within a month to a month and a bit will add to the uh, to the excitement because I, th- I think it's very different for teams to cope with playing two games a week and not having that rest and that breakdown it happens quite often in the championship right they have to cover so many more games um, I know FPL Blade Tomo mentioned it the other day. He said he loved being in the championship because there's, there's some really good teams there, but the intensity of quite often having two games a week and stuff really keeps your interest going. So I'm interested to see what that's going to be like with the fixtures being much more frequent. I don't know if you've got any thoughts on that. My only thoughts after what you said there was Tomo was on at 3.30 in the morning. I have no idea what you said. <laughs> it was in the chat. It was in the chat. <laughs> um, but yeah, th- th- um, I think the intensity of the games will help a little bit. Um, and we'll see who comes out on top. I, I haven't watched any Bundesliga yet. Dortmund play Munich tomorrow, and they're the top two. And realistically, to win that league, I mean, it's four points difference. Dortmund have got to beat them, really. I think it's in Munich, not that that particularly matters now. I might tune in. I think it's 5.30. Uh, or is it today? If it's today, isn't it? 5.30. Tuesday. I might tune in for a bit of it and have a look and see what it looks like. Um, is it on Sky, I'm, is it? Uh, be on BT, wouldn't it? I'm very sceptical about what I'm going to see in the Premier League when it returns. I, I think, like, for the benefit of the pod, sitting there and watching, like, Southampton and Palace with respect to those two clubs on a Monday night with nothing to play for, I mean, I'm really going to struggle to have any enthusiasm to want to watch that. Um, I think I'm going to struggle to have enthusiasm to even watch Spurs under the circumstances. I really hope Spurs aren't first. I, I don't... Because it's just going to be weird. I, I we can go on second, third. I don't want to be first. And have all that in the back of my mind. This is weird as well as watching my team again. So, I'm in a different boat because of the relegation battle. So, um, obviously, we do have something to play for and fight for. Um, it will be weird, but I, I want to see it get started so we can try and put this to bed. I think it's going to happen now. Mm. Yeah, I finally, I finally believe that it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yep. Why do you think we've had no news from the FA or UEFA? Are they just waiting yeah, probably for this just vote do it tomorrow? in one go tomorrow, probably mm-hmm. with the announcement of contacts in, in training. I, I'm surprised that probably UEFA haven't had to put something out officially, but and it could be look that that's imminent. It was a bank holiday yesterday. Let's let's remember it could be that that all was in place on Friday, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. Just like not even the media have picked up been asking questions or anything. It's like they've just forgotten about it. Unless mm. that deadline got moved and I was unaware. Mm. Let's see. Should we get through some of these Twitter questions? Because I think it will cover yeah, a lot let's of do that. points. Um, starting with at Rob Pick 86 we know Rob well. Thoughts on Barnsley telling the EFL they won't accept relegation while three clubs in the championship are being investigated over their finances. How messy could this all get? Incredibly. Yeah, I mean, we spoke with Alex Waterbaby about it, Sheffield Wednesday's current situation and up to a potential 12 point um, points deduction. Yeah, I mean, how do you... 
How do you relegate a club like Barnsley on that circumstance when they might be getting done? And they're obviously not in a position to put anything right from a financial perspective. It does look like there's been some dodgy stuff going on there. Not just at Sheffield Wednesday, there's a couple of other clubs as well. So, you know my belief on this is that if we're, certainly if we're going to avoid the season, we can't relegate anyone. Like, I can't, I can't believe that's where it's going to be at. And, you know, Stevenage, for example, the Bartman League too, have got every right to be shouting, even though, in their case, they were quite adrift and were almost certainly going to go. I still think you have the right to... We've seen teams go on monster runs, winning, like, four out of their last five and stuff and get out of these positions. So, yeah, they, they have every right to, to complain. Barnsley certainly have every right to complain. Yeah, it's, it, the Championship... And League One, particularly the top end of it, how they're going to sort that out, there's going to be arguments. Massive, massive arguments. Worse than the Premier League, I think. I think it'll just end up being tough shit, though. Um, the Barnsley are just saying they won't accept it. I mean, unfortunately, if they get relegated, they what are they going to accept do? it. Because they'll, they'll get... Unfortunately, it's a little bit like what I, I described me as a fan being a client reference number. It'll be, right, you're in League One, either like it or don't be in any league, mm. which is cold, but that would be the answer. And in which case, Barnsley will play in League One, won't they, if that's what it exactly. comes to. So yeah. uh, that, That's why I think it's tough. You, you're going to have to accept what you get. You're going to have to accept what you get. Um, so there's no way of making everyone happy unless you finish your football season. <laughs> We've got a question from our friend Danny that you mentioned FPL is sick of it. What a ledge. Uh, what was it like to find out you'd done it in the dying minutes? Never seen anyone move as fast as such to get your shit ready to go. But I, th- <laughs> I think that, that last, the, the, the dying minutes are the hardest with anything. With, with it wasn't. You... I was. I, I wanted to keep going. I was so happy then. I was, I was like, I was they, they all heard me say it. Should we go to a seven? Nah. Um, the target was almost... I don't know if it was immaterial. Ridiculous. The target was ridiculous, high. by the way. Thank you. Yeah, it was high. Um, hence, I thought as soon as we crossed over the 4,000 to 4,500, I was like, it does four, what, four and a half or five. We've just raised a crap load of money. So I don't think, uh, rightly or wrongly, I don't think I held too much importance on the 5,000 number itself. It I was did. more. Uh, I've, I've worked in know. sales. You give me a target, I've got to hit it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I understand that. And I am quite normally motivated by no- achievement and numbers. But in this situation, it really was, we'd already done it all. And at that point, yeah, I needed, I needed some rest. And, and <laughs> so we haven't eaten properly either. We're pretty mashed up. So there we go. Danny, uh, Angus, you just briefly, you are in Planet FPL folklore now, mate. Certainly Take is. Take it. Um, Angus McPhail, do you think we're still headed for a Premier League resumption on the 20th, 27th of June? Yeah, well, we talked about it. Yes, we really do. Yeah, I think mean, it's coming now. I, I, I don't see anything stopping it now bar second spike. Mm. Um, Angus also has a second question. that uh, it, He's seen the story today that Manchester United seem unlikely to get an extension on Igalo's loan beyond May the 31st. Do you think that will have any actual impact on them if and when the Premier League does resume? No, not really. I think you were looking at a position where he was going to be a, a nice little wonder study for Anthony Marshall up front. Remember, they're getting people back fit now as well. As I kind of already said, people like Pogba and that are going to come back fully fit. Yep. So I think system-wise, it might look slightly different when they come back as well. So no, not a major blow. It covered them off nicely. If it's going to be a ridiculous amount of money, which you can imagine with the wages he would have been on in China, is probably not going to be a cheap deal and they can cope without him. Yeah, I think it'd be fine. Yeah, I agree with you on that as well. Um, they do have options up front in terms of Rashford can play up there as well. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. I wonder, when does uh, Alexis Sanchez is a loan deal at the moment, right? Yeah, it's possible so, that he could be back at United. Yeah, I don't know what the, the details are on that. We've obviously seen a few people who is coming out now in terms of a little bit like this who are, are not going to have renewed contracts beyond that June 30th date. So, be interesting to see. I mean, I guess if, if you take the example, we start on the 26th of June. I think anybody who's out of contract on the 30th is probably not going to be playing that first game. We, we know, say, Jordan Ives is going to be leaving Bournemouth. I think that's probably a mutual decision by the sounds mm-hmm. of things. 
and there'll be a few others as well. I mean, obviously, nobody's getting a renewed contract at the moment. One idea is obviously, which we now know that they can do, certainly in the Premier League at least, is extend these contracts uh, very short term for a further six weeks or so if there's full agreement between player and club. There are obviously going to be certain certain circumstances where there is no agreement, as I keep saying. If, if Palace, for example, who ain't going to qualify for Europe and ain't going to get relegated, have got a player running 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 out on their contract and they weren't going to renew, why bother? Yep. Crack on, play a kid for the last six weeks. Why wouldn't you? Um, our friend Gary Shepherd, who was there for so much of the live stream. So Gary, thank you very much for your support. Given new comments from Leon, um, which I haven't seen, to be honest, have you seen Leon comments? No, nope, missed this. Um, was League A maybe a little hasty to bring an end to its season, especially given most other top flight leagues are aiming to continue? What are the repercussions for the French League? I don't think there will be any repercussions from a European football point of view. Um, were they a little hasty, perhaps? Well, I think in the case of France and Holland, didn't really have much choice because they're in, in both their cases, their Prime Minister came out and said, you ain't doing nothing till September. So at which point, <laughs> where, where did they have to go? Didn't know where to go. I mean, if, if from government level, they'd not pulled the trigger so much, then yeah, I think there's every case that probably would go back and be playing football like like most others. But I think once that was in place by government, that is shutting. There's nothing you can do. You, yeah. Whatever your football governing bodies have just been told, you're you're done basically. So I don't think it was hasty. I think from there, once that was a the decision, then the government's not going back on that a week later. They're not going back on it a week later to say, oh, actually, it's not as bad as we thought it was. No, it's done. So I don't mm-hmm. think they had a choice but to say no, it's over. Wrap it up. Mm. Uh, our friend uh, Luke Porteous, Luke Porteous 20, do you think that next season, if it was to go ahead, would be a whole season behind closed doors? It is going to go ahead. And what impact would it have on the season? I don't think it will be behind closed doors for the whole season. There is talk of letting people in sporadically, isn't there? So a few newspapers at the weekend have picked up on this idea, which sounds highly ridiculous to me, of it going to a ballot in terms of letting a 1,000 in then 2,000 in, then, I don't know, 5,000 in, and, and seeing where it goes from there. Um, doesn't solve the, the whole concourse problem that I've said oh. before about, I mean, certain stadiums, would act like some of the concourses that say Watford, for example. Um, at Spurs, Spurs is so big in terms of the concourses uh, in certain parts of the stadium that you could even do like one ways on the concourses because Spurs have got so much space on that South stand, for example, but um, that's not, that's not going to work everywhere. So it'd be really interesting. The whole ballot idea is weird. Uh, How should... would you feel about wearing a mask at a game? I probably wouldn't. And I'll I, I tell you why mm. the advice would probably be for someone who's, who's worried not to sit in front of me because if there's only a thousand of us in the ground, I'm going out and I, I I'll be leaving the ground and I probably won't be able to speak afterwards because I will then believe I can truly have an impact on what happens on that football pitch. Uh, so I'm, I'll, be giving it, I'll be giving it everything to Ndombele. for the whole game. No, Ndombele, in support of them. Ndombele. In support <laughs> of them, you'd get no negatives. It, it would have to be purely positive no matter what's happening. Yeah, but you could... That sound travels through a mask. What, back at me? No, it will, I mean, sound waves will travel through a mask, right? I, I think it will be one of those situations where it will be compulsory to wear a mask at a game. I think if you... If, you if it like is, if it is, then, then obviously it is. Um, yeah. I won't, I won't wear gloves at a football match, no matter how cold it is. Why? Anything I can uh, add, I'll add. I won't wear okay. gloves. Uh, James could get a drum. I'm going to get you a drum for your next birthday. You can go. Oh, I don't. I don't want a drum. I wish. I wish <laughs> Spurs would get the drummer back. He used to be at the Park Lane 15 odd years ago. But <laughs> that's another um, podcast. Yeah, I think. I think it, people. So back to the original question. I don't think it will be behind closed doors for the rest of for the entire next season. This season will be, and I think they'll get fans back in. But I do think, like we use common sense. You go to a supermarket. You you walk past people in a, in a specific way and you manage yourself, I think people will just do that at football grounds. So we've got quite big, wide concourses as well, so generally it's not too bad. Um, but I also think people consume less food and drink and all that kind of stuff uh, at stadiums. 
what is every chance to shut it off? Yeah, yeah close it. But then exactly. you've got certain certain things out. So certain pubs are trying to think at the moment in terms of reopening about not being able to use toilets. I'm not being funny, but like a pint and a half in, you've got to leave, haven't you? Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> you can't sit in the pub and have eight pints and not go for a piss, can you? So. What am I, I going to tell my six? Yeah. If I take my seven, if I take my seven-year-old, he's what we're going to be wear a nappy, son. <laughs> If the toilets are out of action, that's ridiculous. It's not going to happen. Oh, man. Some Impossible. people just had some brave ideas about going to the boozer with a nappy on <laughs> Wow. <laughs> i tell you what, let me tell you right now from experience. Dale's, make sure they're, adult, adult nappies grow. <laughs> make, make sure they're pampers, mate. Don't be getting no like discount stuff from Lidl or anything like that. You come out in a rash, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, dear. We've yeah, got I mean, friend... but it, it could be, it, to relate that to football, though, it could be they wouldn't open concessionary stands and stuff like that. Mm. Possibility, because then you've got like a queue in aspects um that, i mean the, you, op- the how open do keep, how do you keep the meter apart on like a concession stand that that away end at what i mean you can't what for the way for example anyone who's been there you can't move no can't, i don't think in in fairness to that like uh i don't think away fans will be going to premier league football next season yeah uh, I, I, I can't see that travel. yeah um and I'm just, I, think, I'm just I, can, I, can, I can see the staggered thing. I don't like the whole ballot idea, though. It should go on loyalty. But I'll put it in a ballot. The fuck? That comes back down to uh, a discussion we had with Andy Let's Talk FPL at the end of his hour session on the weekend. Do you think that fans that don't go to games regularly are any less worthy or valuable than all of a sudden? Like, I've had my season tickets two years. Some people have had them 200 years or whatever. I want to see my club just as much as they do. No, I get that. I, I, I okay. absolutely get that. But to flip that, if, if there's two games available to go to, tell me honestly that I deserve to go to one and person X deserves to go to one, who, who goes to one game a season. No, I should be in there for both. Why? Because I am there all the time. That's why, like, when we if we get to a cup final and stuff, you don't know like why that, you don't know why they're not there. No, I also I get that, but then what? They're lucky enough in the ballot to get in for like, uh, you know, there's two thousand tickets available for Arsenal at home or something, and they're one of the lucky enough ones to go. When I when I've gone to every game for thirty years, no. I no, think that's, that's not right. <laughs> the, the point with football is to try and involve as many people as you can, right? A lot of clubs, kids for a quid days and all that kind of stuff, it's because they want to bring the game to a bigger audience. Um, if it becomes what you're talking about, if it was like two or three games here or there, no one's going to care. But if it was for the duration of the season, if you're talking about 10 games, I don't think clubs will want that will care about you in terms of that of course way. they won't care about me. They will want to touch as many people as possible to keep the fan base as wide and broad. But and I also as know well as I also know that, that my supporters trust will fight for the, the loyalty element of that. I, I know I know that I know what you're saying in terms of yeah get as many people there as possible, but there's got to be some sort of line in terms of the loyalty for the season ticket holders, etc. It's the same with like a waypoint. You can say so there's plenty away from home now who can't go to away games. And we know there's plenty of online selling of away tickets, etc. But I get the chance through years of loyalty to have staggered it up. Now, it's probably coming from me that because I don't go as much as I used to, that my loyalty is slowly going to fade away. And I'm, I, might, I might not be able to go to away games. But I've built that up to, to earn it. Can't just then go, all oh, right, yeah, it's Arsenal away. Oh, we're going to put it open to a random ballot and stuff. No. It's it's the going to those it's it's the going to those away games over the years gave me the right to be in Amsterdam, mate. Couldn't mm-hmm. put that to, you couldn't put that to a ballot. I think the um, it depends on the numbers here. So, for example, if you've got thirty thousand in the stadium, and say there's fifty thousand season ticket holders, where's that fifty thousand? I suppose maybe fifty five. The majority it's of the stadium. Forty five, but once you add the premium. It's probably about seven thousand general admission okay, tickets so are available for a game. Call yeah. it fifty. If they if they were allowed to get thirty thousand into the stadium, yeah. then if they said look twenty thousand are going to be balloted between the season ticket holders, so you've now got a one in two chance, and the other ten thousand are going to be balloted open. So 
if there's a hundred thousand people that apply for those other ten thousand, that's a one in ten chance. That is a very different situation to all of them being open to everybody. So I don't mind a waiting system where if you're a season ticket holder, you get as a minimum, for example, every other game. Whereas if you're open Joe Public, the chances are much less. Um, but I don't believe in a pure meritocracy of first, uh, like going down the um, tier po- what do they call them? tier points or loyalty points or whatever system where only the most loyal get to go first. Because I feel I think you'll suffer from uh, newer, younger fans being a bit disenfranchised. With but I, I think we'll have, and sorry. this is something that's not being spoken about. I think we'll have a lot of people don't want to go to football anymore. Yeah, that's the other thing, right? But I think those people should have that choice first in terms of the scene ticket holders. Sorry, I suffered Wembley and all that. I kept going. So, no, yeah. I, I think I should be first in line to say, do you want to go? Yeah. The problem with me is, you know me, they could open the door next week and I go. Yeah. That's I'm my addiction. To, I, I'm trying to sift out the bias in what you're saying because I also do... If I, oh, I if am I biased. Was, if I, I don't was, want to miss it. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I was in your shoes and I had not missed the game for 30 years and then it was a lottery chance, I'd be pissed off if I didn't get to go to a game. So I understand where you're coming from. I just think that, yeah. It's, it's a, it's oh, by the way, so, I would bet money that I would still be there. Because I would buy off someone. Oh, exactly. There you go. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get your picture and mugshot. Watch this guy charge him a thousand pounds. It's going to be everywhere. Everyone's yeah. going to know this guy's coming. Take his wallet. Um, let's move you, on. You to imagine that if we've still got to play Arsenal at home, right? Imagine mm-hmm. that thirty years, and that's the first game I'm missing. No, mm-hmm. I will have. A, I will have a grand in my pocket. Yeah, I understand. That, that, it, that, I feel it. I really feel it from your point of view. I think it's, it's going to be a very, very tough one. I'm actually interested to see how the clubs manage it. Um, you're talking about people not wanting to go to the games. I'm not taking my kids. Yeah, you've said point. that already. I get that. Yeah, I don't, see, I don't see the point, really, to be honest with you. Um, unless we're fully in the clear. Or, yeah, unless we're fully in the clear. Or there's like rows, uh, every other row or something like that is the segregation. Um, but if you said the, the concessions are going to be closed, there's no pick and mix, they won't want to fucking come anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brian at Blades That was Attack. a good debate. We should have done that on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Brian Blades attack uh, with Livingston seemingly putting their goalkeeper's future in the hands of a Twitter poll. Should more teams engage in dialogue with the fans when players contracts are due to expire? Okay. Um, I I think even I'd put my hands up when I first saw it. I was like, what is this? Forwarded forwarded it to you. And you were like, what is this? This can't be right. It's It's a a hoax. It's a wind up. It's a publicity stunt. Um, I think they were going to give him a contract either way is how it looks. Or maybe the guy knows that he's retiring or something anyway. He's, well, he's, thir- he's 37. He's like backup goalkeeper. But um, yeah, it, I mean, if it was true, that is horrendous. But it, And that's why I picked up on it. But yeah, it's clearly, it's a, it's a stunt. The, he's got the, like teammates in there like, yeah, fuck off, you rubbish, leave. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely a publicity stunt. Yeah, and there were fans that were saying things like he'd slagged off Scottish football and all the teams in Scotland and all that kind that's of what, stuff. That's what one of his teammates said. We've got to get him out. Mm. It's all a wind-up, mate. Mm. It's interesting. Like um, They might have done that with a view to see if the fans would be like, yeah, keep him, we love him, and try and build that up. What if they, they, they came back and said, yeah, we don't like him? just you, doesn't seem like a very cool person. No, 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 exactly. But you, your man had obviously... Been yeah, in a position on. where he'd said, Crack "Yeah, I'm, on, I'm okay. happy. I'm happy to do it." Like I said, he might be retiring anyway, or or he knows that he's getting a, a one year extension or something. So, yeah, it was, I, I think it's still a little bit odd, by the way. In terms, honestly, of like, imagine this. Stunt, but... Imagine imagine this situation where okay, so I put out on Twitter, um, James is just not doing it anymore. You guys vote whether you want him on the show or not, and we've done it as a publicity stunt. So you're in on the joke and whatever. And then 80% of the comments are, yeah, fuck that guy anyway. You'd, 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 you'd still, you'd be looking at it and think, oh, I thought they, like, I knew it was a joke and they're probably doing it as a joke, but there's still a small part of you that's, oh, that's not very nice. I, will, I, just, I, I think from the perspective of, your man must be 
uh, an inc- and he's not very active on Twitter. He even even though he plays for him, he's got like three hundred and fifty followers, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> he must be very mentally strong to have known some of them comments were going to come, and he's responded to some of them. Yeah. And I think that could be quite damaging because some of the comments in there are, are serious responses who think people believe it's it's true and stuff. So. Yeah, he was obviously prepared for all that. He's not bothered. He's quite an experienced pro, etc. I, I, I mean, it still fits odd. So yeah. it's an odd way of doing a publicity stunt. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Hard times, right? And I, I, I think <laughs> it it got a ridiculous amount of votes, right? I mean, I think Livingston's followed by about twenty thousand people on Twitter. I think he had like seventy thousand votes or something. So if that's what their plan was then I, I guess it works. And, and most, most people, I mean, I pressed the button and give them the job anyway, just for crack, right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to yeah. see the man on the dolky. I was like, well, give him the job, but, but, and I think that's what most people did. Yeah. Uh, Mike Day at Mike D Bristol. Uh, how are you, Mike? I hope you're well. Playing behind closed doors seems to be an issue for home teams in Germany so far with only three home wins from 18 games. I haven't looked at the fixtures enough to know that is there any bias in terms of all the best teams are playing away from home in the first couple of rounds. But cardboard cutouts of fans have been used and now talk of fake crowd noises for EFL games. What's the ideal solution as long as fans cannot attend? I don't want fake crowd noises. Fake crowd noises would be Do it for what it is. If it means we have to hear the players, etc., you know, now to me feels like the absolute perfect time to mic up a referee. And see what it looks like, and players have got to know. Yeah, and look, it's What's new. Your... It's, it's new rules for everybody in terms of like not spitting and stuff like that. Right now is the perfect time to say, "There's no crowd. We're micing up the referee. Behave, or you're getting sent off." What's your views on the cardboard cutouts? Because the fans were paying for their own cardboard uh... cutouts. If Spurs sent you an email and said, "James, you can like go online and you can take a picture of yourself and upload it, and we'll print a cardboard cutout, twenty pounds." Yeah, why not? I mean, it's a, it's a visual, isn't it? As to it, it adds to the, the visual. But you it, have I mean, to pay for it. Uh, I feel like they're going to use it as a money making exercise. Charging. Who's going to lay down sixty two thousand cardboards, man? We ain't the Germans. We discussed this with Emma on Saturday. They're efficient. No one at Spurs is laying down sixty two thousand cardboards, mate. They barely get a tifo organised, right? So we'll get we'll get Robbie Savage and Alan Shearer to do it. Do you remember the comic relief where they sat on oh, every single yeah. seat? They moved. Uh, took them. How long did it even? It was days. Oh, I don't it? know. A long time. Ouch. But uh, yeah, none of these fake crowd noises. We can all see it's empty. It's fake. I remember when they tried that at Wembley with Spurs, and it was embarrassing because really? it was obvious. It was you know, it's eighty thousand in the crowd. Like so many people complained to Spurs. What are you doing? Is eighty thousand of us here? Don't need mm. any of that. Piss off. Why did they do that? I don't know. They put like a okay. fake drum over the tannoy and it was laughable. Didn't it need to fake, do it. And, and they put a statement out and said, we're really sorry. We shouldn't have done that. We was moving to Wembley before it would help. Spurs, Spurs fans very much feel like they're of an organic nature in terms of, you know, we'll, we'll get the song started during the game, etc., etc. If it's shit and they don't deserve supporting, then we'll just be quiet. <laughs> but no, don't, don't put fake noises in. That's so bad. Don't do that. Right. Um, I'm going to read this question out, but just just because I've got to move away from this screen on my um, computer and we'll come back to it in about five minutes because it's a champ man question. So, And it's Pep Talk, uh, our friend Pep Talk. Is managing to hit red cards for Poyet, game week one, Shearer, game week nine, Henri, game week 11, Elliot, game week 15, Petrescu and Goma, game week 16, just bad luck, or am I now the go-to player to follow in order of knowing who will be my next victim? Yeah, can you tweet out your team and tag me in? <laughs> yeah, I mean, everybody's suffered with this somewhere, right? <laughs> everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, at me if you haven't had a red card yet this season. You're going to struggle to find many, right? Mm, that's true. I had, uh, I had two in one week, Ashley Cole and Matt Elia, but I didn't play Ashley Cole. But now looking at my team, I've got two suspensions. Um, so yeah, it's it's been horrible this season so far. People thought it was hilarious, by the way, when you realised at one thirty one that you hadn't done your team. Mm. It was a, many many a person's highlight of Saturday's stream when you kept saying, oh, "I've got to do my team." 
And you can see, I, I've, I've, <laughs> looked through, I've, I've, I've looked back through the chat a few times, just skimming the chats in, uh, on the YouTube vids. And even from as early as like 11 o'clock in the morning, so just gonna forget, isn't it? So just gonna forget. <laughs> and then, and then, in the last, when we had Steve O on, obviously we had the Elite Boys in, who were in the chat. And thanks for joining in, those guys. Um, and they added something to it. But it was the odd chat in there was like, so just really going to forget to do his team, having literally just said, "I have I've to got do, to do it. my team." Unbelievable. Oh, funny. Um, let's jump through to some of these other questions as well. Quite a few of these are comments and highlights from the live stream. So we'll just read those out and we don't need to answer them particularly. Um, shout out to Shiva FPL. Shiva, hope, hope you're doing all right. The best part of Planet FPL pod 24-hour marathon was when Dive, FPL and Hell Cheaters joined them in quick succession. That's my three favourite podcasts together. Sometimes dreams do come true. Thank you very much for that. The, the best bit of that, if I can just add on, is I didn't know that was going to happen myself. So yeah. um, Suja kind of slightly informed me that one of the cheaters would probably join us if they could. That is yeah. all I knew. So it was a surprise to me as well. Yeah, even uh, Marco and Jake, because they're in different time zones. They're not in the same city. So initially, Marco was like, look, uh, it's going to be 12 o'clock and uh, I can't come on uh, home issues. And Jake works random hours. And then quite at the end, he was like, you know, what? fuck it. We're going to do it. So at the end, nice. I was like, Good yes, lads. happy great. days. Funny Jake guys. needs to get rid of that flag on his wall. They were great. <laughs> Yeah, and we we have a, a 300 word essay about why that flag is on that wall now. And Brandon and Josh were amongst, I mean, the majority of the guests who came on during the day, if not all of them, donated a really great total as well. Um, uh, big Brandon, Brand, Brandon and Josh can afford it more than the others do. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is coming in from Dylan Farrell at 19. Dylan Farrell. Um, copying in the tweet from Livingston FC. But if you could have the future of a player at your club decided by Twitter, who would it be? I'd go, go safe, go Harry Kane. Oh, come on, James. We'd, he'd, we'd stay, wouldn't he? I think like, if you wanted to do it funny, you'd have like the one that calls a major debate, someone like Aurea or something. <laughs> yeah. So Because I think most people would be like, yeah, moving on, we need a better right back. I don't know if they'd be brave enough to press that button when it came to it. <laughs> 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 so I, I think would, so, someone uh, like Oreo yeah. would be good, Craig. I'm go I would go with um probably Arthur Masuaku. Okay. I think Arthur Masuaku, because I think he's he's Marmite as well, um, <laughs> within West Ham circles. He's there's a lot of people that really like him and there's a lot of people that don't. Alright. Manchild just opened the door. What was that name? Arthur Masuaku. I'll text it to your Mrs. Manchild. That'll be your first. Son or daughter. That'll be, be your first merch Planet FPL t shirt. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd go with him. I was trying to think if our, our centre backs, nah, there's no controversy there, but definitely, uh, yeah, Masterak is a little like bit. Like a Yarmolenko normal. or an Anderson. Any divide on that sort of thing? Anderson, Anderson is actually quite divisive. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's why I said it. Yeah, I think the, I think the majority of people do still think he's right. And Yarmolenko scores enough good goals with his left foot to get away with it. I think he, he always just seems to get himself on the good into the good books. Anderson's biggest um there's two things with Anderson that I think wind people up. Work rate and that work rate thing is a complete myth. If you look at his stats, he actually covers a lot of ground and makes a lot of tackles and does a lot of tracking back. And the other is the the little bit of tricks and flicks sometimes when he needs to keep it simple. That winds people up as well. But then other times when he plays well, right? The, he, he had a game um, at home. I'm trying to uh, the Bournemouth game, I think, where we won four nil, and he played so well. It took nothing. The, the crowd was on. He got subbed off at about 65 minutes, if memory serves me correctly, and everyone was cheering him off. Like it doesn't take long for a player like that to get the crowd back on side with one great performance. So, yeah, I'm going to stick with my original off of Masuaku. Let's have a Twitter vote on that guy. All and right. for the record, I'd vote to keep Arthur Masaraku. Um, here, Mike Day, Mike D. Bristol, he's jumped on both tweets. Do you remember the last hour or is it all one giant emotional blur? Uh, Favourite uh, moment was the amount of people that responded in the last 20 minutes when you were still 250 quid short and threatening to donate it yourself. 
Um, oh yeah, I was never donating the money. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> no, I would have. I really would have. I wasn't having it. I was not leaving that room without hitting target, mate. I would have kept the string going. You could have pissed off. I think it it speaks to your mentality. I, I was actually confident that we would have hit it anyway. Like, if not by the time we got to six o'clock, there was enough donations that were due to come through that we were so close. We were going to hit it anyway by that point. Um, but yeah, the last hour I remember quite clearly. Um, it was good fun. It, it was that, that, that when you're getting down to minutes, it, it really was. Yeah, and I mean, the four boys who came on was a massive help as well. Yeah. Um, big time. Yeah. Uh, Drone UK, uh, way too many favourite moments. Uh, his questions are, would you do it again? Yes. I would, but not anytime soon. I think no. I, I would need a good six months Ten years. to recover. <laughs> nah, Ten years. Six months, but... But would I do it again? Yes, I definitely would do it again. Yeah, I would do it again. It'd be difficult to probably do it as as well as we did it again as well. Plus, as well, we did it again as a fucking expectation now. But there's a lot of people we couldn't have on on, on the day. You know, people like like Will from Hub. I think yeah. if we did it again. We'd give Will like a full half hour or an hour or something. Mm. Plenty of other people like we take the piss, but give give Rob Pick some time. Yep. Loads of other people. Um, yeah. I don't, but I don't suppose it would look too different to what it did this time because the feedback on the actual content is also really satisfying mm. in terms of the way people have reacted to that and reacted to all the guests that come on. I think all the guests that come on had a good time, felt like they contributed and, and, and were a part of it, and so they should as well. So I don't mm. think it would, it would deviate much. We'd have to keep it that fast paced. I think the theme for you and I during the day was people go like, oh, well done, lads, three hours gone. And the worst thing you can do is think, fuck, 21 hours to go. But yeah. we just we just kept sitting there and going, that went quick. Do you know and what I would do All day long. Mm. Not play and, Pictionary. Although some people um, think hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> what I would do differently is probably, and not a lot, but have three or four more guests who were not part of the FPL community and we could touch on topics that were not FPL or football related. I agree, yeah. That were broader. Um, talking about German fan football or gambling or what have you, try and get a few people that had some broader sports kind of stuff to get on. Um, because we talk, we talk to each other all on Twitter all the time anyway. So what I don't want to do is cover repetitive ground. I'd like to go out and get a slightly broader demographic of guests, but not massively. I'm not turn the whole thing on its head. Um, but just a few more because I think they worked really well. So that's why I'd like to, to extend on that. I would definitely do it again. I think it would be better if we did it again on the second time round as well. It ain't happening for at least a year. I'll tell you that now. <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah, it's something we could do again, I think. Um, clean sheet wipeout. Uh, again, watch 15 plus hours. What was your favourite moment? And is this your proudest achievement to date? Uh, favourite moment was hitting the target. Because then you know that it's all worth it. Yeah. Um, I think selfishly for me, I was so pleased with the work Emma did. Yeah. Because it was a little bit of a gamble. You you'd never spoke to her, so it no, was a, only on, it uh, was a, I've only seen her on Twitter. Before it that, was a, an absolute <laughs> trust me, so she will be brilliant, and mm. and she was. I was delighted with with the response to Emma because next to nobody in the community would have known who, who she was on that. So Maybe a few Spurs lot, maybe. Yeah, other than that, most people wouldn't. Like, she doesn't play FPL or anything, but I think that leads on to what you say in terms of what we might do differently next time. Um, I'm never going to live down Nagasaki. Yeah, I was going to say, what was the, my favourite moment has oh, to be Nagasaki. And I literally and I lost to... myself. I was, I was laughing, crying. You know when you laugh so hard? Yeah, yeah. You, went, tears, you went to the, to the toilet tears. and I brought uh, Simon on, uh, who was chilling out in California, uh, FPL footballer. And uh, I was like, did you watch the last 15 or 20 minutes? Because if you did, you'll understand why James is not here. He goes, yeah, I did see you laughing himself. I was like, yeah, I think he laughed so hard, a little bit of wheeze come out. So he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, my, that was definitely, the, so definitely, hard. definitely the funniest. Um, proudest achievement to date. It's a tough one because there's a couple of things I've done in my life that were um, ridiculous. I walked the length, the, the width of England in seven days and I've done it twice. And that's 192 miles in seven days. So you're doing about 25 miles a day. Um, and it's up and down through the hills and the mountains. So 
you're physically, your feet are, everything's fucked. And you're starting walking at six in the morning, finishing at 10 at night, and then you get up ready to go again at six in the morning. Just so it. when you do the final two miles, like the final two miles walking of that had very similar emotions to the final 20, 30 minutes here of delirium. You're like, I, actually, I've been doing this for so long. When it's finished, I don't actually know what I'm going to do with myself. Mm. <laughs> like it stopped. But I mean, it's well, it's well up there. Um, it's so funny. <laughs> There's some of the messages I had as well. One of my, my cousins who plays a lot of FPL, he was pretty pissed on the Sunday night. We're just sending me loads of messages like, um, not many people do something like this. It's amazing. What a great achievement. Even my mum sent me a few messages. She tuned in at 1.30 in the morning. Half an hour later, she tuned off. She goes, you're swearing too much. I'm leaving. <laughs> I was like, it's after 9 Sorry, p.m. Mom. Yeah, I was like, it's after 9 p.m. What do you expect? Uh, but she, yeah, so, so yeah. It's a good job she didn't turn up at 9 a.m. when you when you just, you dropped the first F-bomb at 9 a.m. <laughs> and a hard fuck oh. off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got FPL Lucky, uh, FP Lucky F Flucker. Um, to get it right, we just call him Lucky Fucker. Lucky Fucker, yeah. Yeah. Uh, favorite two moments, definitely Nagasaki and then crossing it with your singing. I think you're a few people's ringtones now. I think Nictavius. Oh, uh, Badger said ringtone. something out, didn't he? Because about a minute after the title was here, I went into celebration, good times, come on. Mm. Um, and yes, a few people, I mean, that's fandom on new levels, have decided that's now their, their alarm or, or their ringtone, mm. which is slightly scary. But uh, yeah, whatever makes people happy, isn't it? Mm. Um, Steve O, Elite FPL, who got a lot of love throughout the day. Didn't as well. he just? Uh, he thinks so. The biggest testament is that 24 hours felt like 24 minutes. His standout was James Jewelry coming on. Oh um, wow! When plus... when the when the Ice Man drops the first. Mm. In fact, what well, James came on twice, right? So he came on once during the, the content creator hour, which was mental to have some of them names come on in that hour. James drops in. Was he straight after the general, maybe? Uh, I think he might have yeah, been. Yeah. yeah, so we got the general on. We talked about all this mass following he's got, etc. You know, how long he's been in the community, what he's been up to. And now we go to James Drury from the surgery, and he just drops in like four. He's just gone from one extreme yeah, to yeah. the other. It was amazing. And then and I, I think had, when he came I, on the second time, I'd come back from the toilet, and I'm like, who the fuck's painting their wall? <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, yeah. I um, I actually hadn't even thought. Uh, it was only like probably fifteen minutes before he was due to come on. I was thinking, you know what? I remember from the Christmas meetup that boy Drury's got some arms, and Elite FPL Steve has got some arms. I'm gonna fucking make him fight. <laughs> I think we we, we listen. There's an, there's not that far a distance that we can we can make the Iceman and Steve-O have an arm wrestling match. I think we can do That's their charity fundraiser. Off you go, boys. Get a crowd for that one. Sham, uh, FPL Two Guys One Cup, he deserves a lot of credit for donating that Raheem Sterling shirt because that sold to Karam in the, in Holland for £270. So yeah, that's, I that's, that. just, that's just that's, uh, <laughs> phenomenal. Um, but he, poor Karam came on and, uh, and, and saved our stream. At yeah. 10 o'clock in the morning. And then got and it ended up costing him 270 quid. <laughs> Sham says that he, the, the positive comments after his session genuinely made him cry. And he was blown away by the messages and inspiration he's been able to do. People messaging him, asking for help. Um, That's amazing. People, um, yeah. Um, and also, they managed to get 80 quid together for me to down a beer at 4 a.m. But I wouldn't. Uh, honestly, I would have puked. If I'd have downed a can at that time, I would have puked. I would have puked. I think that's what they were looking for, mate. Yeah, probably. It, it was not going to be worth it. I needed this to last the 24 hours. Massive um, shout out to Sham, which was the, basically the final half hour of part two. Mm. That was courageous shit. Well done, that man. And, and as I said to him when we closed, I said that if one person comes and approaches you afterwards and it helps, you've done an amazing job. So he said he's mm. had a couple. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, let's touch on uh two final questions we've got um one is a shout out from alex ball alex water baby who was on the stream as well um he's his first question was would you do it again and what changes would you make well we've answered that with a previous question so great minds think alike and then we're back into this champ man fpl will you be triple captain rude van nisselroy this week why or why not 
probably yes but i haven't decided yet and and the honest answer to let down the champ man followers is i really really haven't assessed this at all since probably last wednesday um and, and i will do today but just haven't had the time but i think yeah there, there's rumors that apparently doesn't perform very well in sims away to middlesbrough there's other rumors that he could well be rested against leicester i think you're looking at probably around i think 40 percent, judging by a poll that the, the official guys have put out are probably going to pull that trigger on triple captain there are pros and for, uh, pros and cons of doing it. The, the the biggest con of not doing it is the absolute disaster if he goes mental. Mm-hmm. The biggest pro is there could be something further down the line, but there is no guarantee, basically. And the rotation, as we've seen this week with like Sammy Hippier and stuff, is that that rotation can hit any player in the double game week. And Rude is just about, generally speaking, and we know he's going to get rotated at some point, and he hasn't yet. He's about as locked and nailed as anybody can be. And that makes me think, I don't know, Leicester, Middlesbrough, it sounds all right to me. They probably will have another double further down the line. I looked into it. So I think it's that they're, they're, they're highly likely to get to the League Cup final. And they were due to play Bolton away game week 31. Now that rearranged fixture is likely to go into 32 or 34, which would it would be two away games, Bolton and Ipswich away, or Bolton and Everton away. And that's all fine, actually, for Van Nistelrooy. He's probably less likely to be dropped in away fixtures. However, if they're still in the Champions League at that time as well, it could really complicate things. Although his general overall natural fitness means that, basically, he's nearly always at around about 100%. So you might decide that it's better off during those periods. And I can understand that. I don't think it's right or wrong. You're going to get a real split in terms of doing it or not doing it. I probably will do it. It's probably where I'm at in my thinking at the moment. Mm. Yeah. I, um, I had a bad week last week, relatively speaking. I had 49 points. Um, yeah, I didn't. I had I mean, 70 captain. and dropped. Yeah, I had 49 and obviously dropped as well. I may even be outside the top 1,000 now, which is not good. Um, but I haven't used any chips. And then I also didn't gamble on the double game week for Liverpool um, or Fulham. As it should be said, it was both of those clubs. And there were people that did. And then the likes of Boa Morte and stuff and Heskey and that did actually perform. And then I missed out on the Spurs returns as well. I only had Selakovic's returns. So I need to really now start thinking about what I'm going to do um, I honestly think I'm so far behind that I want to play a differential game here now and stop going after the highly owned players and just start really manoeuvring it around. I've also been very conservative in this. Like I rolled, like, okay, this weekend just gone. Maybe I wouldn't have rolled, but we were so in the middle of the stream, I didn't. I'm going to start taking a lot more hits now. Do you know how many hits you've taken so far this season? Oh, I'd have to check, but probably about 28 points worth, I'd say. See, I've done eight as you know, two. eight, eight points overall. Eight yeah. points, yeah. I've just done two hits, eight points. And I told myself at the start, oh, I'm going to have a little bit of fun with this and play around, and I haven't. So I am going to start now. Um, well, I'm mucking around a little bit more. So some news from the Chapman guys. Obviously, they're opening up the, the game, and they've, they've now got it as a web um, <laughs> website as well. Have you logged Su- in? And Suji's, Suji's typing. Yeah. While you were in the audio, and see Chapman.com. Yeah. It's a brilliant little website. I've not had a proper chance to look at it uh, as yet, but feedback's amazing. Basically, you know, we spoke to a number of people even Saturday were like, oh, we should got involved. Well, now you can. There'll be a brand new yeah, league it was, starting it, from It couldn't have been next better Wednesday, timing. Basically. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> um, perfect. And, and they can use the next three game weeks as like a pre-season. So anybody that joins now, your points from 17, 18 and 19 will get wiped, but you'll have had a chance to set your team up and play around a little bit. Uh, yeah, so the game week 20, it will start, won't it? Which is going to be the 6th of June when uh, mm-hmm. the second half of the season starts. So you've got three game weeks where you can you can muck around with it. You can do like one bench boost, you can do one triple caps in, one free hit. It's not going to affect your chips afterwards. You'll you'll have everything for that second half when it when it comes back. The guys are, will look after you. That's the one thing you know with this these lot. Mm. 
So you've got three weeks to, to trial it, error it, probably catch up on the stream, see if you enjoy it. Make sure you're taking, you know, all the other accounts out there, the Wolfpack pods, brilliant. You've got to get on Luke, a disabled FF scout, Luke, uh, get on his videos, like tutorials. Go back and watch them. Go back weeks will help you massively with Luke mm -hmm. particularly. Obviously, watch the guys' streams, Andy and, and Dave, on a Sunday night at 9.30, the Championship Manager account. And by all means, use the hashtag. And you know what an FPL community is like when it's in a good place, right? People will yep. just come. People will just come and help once you start using that that champ man FPL hashtag. Um, and obviously, uh, my DMs are open. If you're unsure of anything, by all means, dive in. But I think I think you'll soon pick it up. Scoring is obviously very similar. the The only major assistant uh, change in terms of scoring is. You don't get assists from shots saved that are then converted by rebounds, which is always a dodgy assist anyway. And obviously, there's there's the bonus points is very very different, so you need to be conscious of that. Obviously, have a look at Whitebeard's site as well, mm -hmm. uh, which is really handy for the for the stats and whatnots. So you can soon pick it up. Yeah. And uh, the one argument is like speaking to Adam on Saturday morning. I understand why he wouldn't want to play. Doesn't even. He's so young, he, he was still in nappies and stuff when this all happened. So I've never, I've never played the game, don't really know the play. You don't need to. You don't need to. I think it helps if you know the nostalgia a little bit from, a, from an inner feeling, but you don't need to know anything to actually perform quite well at this. Because um, there's so much luck and randomness in it as well in terms of injuries and uh, goalkeepers being substituted after 25 minutes and red cards and the like. That It's a roller coaster and it's brilliant fun. Mm. So there we go. We don't have any other Chapman questions. You don't really know massively what you're doing yet. I think I'm going to triple captain Van Nistelrooy. I've got two free transfers in hand. I do want to get a third United asset in, but I'm not quite sure how I want to work that. And I'm also conscious that Spurs do have some very good fixtures, you know. Mm. And, you know, like something like Fowler to Redruff is, is straightforward, really, when next two are Derby and Charlton at home. Even Leicester and Blackburn away. Dennis Leeds at home. Okay, then it's a blank, but it's, it's Fulham away after that. Then Sunderland at home. So Spurs still have a really good run of fiction. I'm not sure from from attacking perspective if I want to miss any more of that, actually. So I might even not go for a third United asset and just go, okay, I've got Van Nistelrooy and Sylvester. For my makeup, it might be better for me to now add another Spurs player. Um and then work it from there. So, I mean, I've got Crossley, Johnston, Sylvester Van Nistel in terms of double game week players. I could obviously go Fowler to Boxich. Gives me three and a half million to jump off like a Steven Gerrard up to Beckham, for example. And when you put it like that, it's going to be hard not to do that. But I just wonder, in terms of what I'm doing, if I might just be better off just firing like Redbroth or something. I don't know. I need to give it some thought. I'm going to be selling Matt Elliott more than likely and also Jason Yule. I had a goal of him last week and I think that will do nicely. I'm not going to get bugger all else out of him. Um, and I'm actually going to potentially then end up with a Middlesbrough triple up. So I'll be selling Yule for Boxic and um, uh, Elliott for Dean Gordon. Um, and then I'll have Gordon, Johnson and... Uh, and Boxic from Middlesbrough, which will give me good coverage for the double game. I'll have five Do we, we know if Gordon's fit? I'm not 100% sure. That's the one thing that I, I need to definitely check. Following on from that, because they've got Newcastle at home, Everton away, then a tough away game at Arsenal, but then they've got West Ham at home. And it, then there's a blank in 22. But after that, you've got Derby away, Charlton at home, Leicester away, but then Blackburn at home. It's a decent run for Middlesbrough for quite some time. Um, so I don't mind tripling up on Middlesbrough at all. So that's probably what the direction I'm going to take it. Yeah, I think to check his fit. Middlesbrough and Spurs would be the only two teams not playing in 22 that I'd be looking at now. I think the, the other one, just to mention briefly, between now and then, is Bolton, who kind of come back on the radar a little bit. Charlton at home, Leicester at home, West Ham away, Derby away, Blackburn at home, blank. Sunderland away. They've got a good little run, actually, Bolton. So they're, they're the only other ones. I'm going to have a, 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 I could go back and have a look at Pedersen. I don't think I'd look any, any further afield of that. But I might decide to, to... I might look at that as the next four weeks, even though Boxic is on paper an extra fixture. 
and weighed it up whether I think Pedersen can outscore Boxage over those fixtures if I come down from Reb, uh, Fowler rather than going sideways to say Rebrov. Mm. Um, after this week, I mean, Sunderland have Leeds at home, but Sunderland have been on a decent run. And then they've, after Leeds, they've got Blackburn at home, Derby away. Tough game against Liverpool, but if West Ham won at Liverpool, how good can they really be? Southampton away, Bolton at home. There, there is a gap in the middle of the blank game week. So I don't think Sunderland's a bad shout either at the moment. Yeah, possibly. I think for me, I'm probably looking at it and going, Blackburn at home, fine. And then depending on where I'm at in my makeup, Phillips is the one I'm going to start to kind of want to move away from. Not definitely. I mean, it's Derby away afterwards. But then I know that I need to work back in these Leeds boys ahead of game week 22 thing, and on paper doubles in 23 and, and 24. 23 and 24 yeah the other thing is i've seen a few people mentioning the idea of like wild card in 21 in preparation for 23 so you can maneuver the fact there's only eight teams playing in 22 and then still have the fact you've got six teams on paper double in 23 but if you wild card in 21 you won't know if those doubles are still going ahead or not so i think it mm. kind of rules that out because if any of those uh, six teams that are due to have the double in 23, which is Derby, Leeds, Arsenal, Newcastle, Liverpool, Tottenham, if they draw in the FA Cup, those 23 doubles will be rearranged. Mm. And you're not going to know that till after 21. So uh, it's important to, to, to note that um, this, is it, it, this is technically after January, so you, everybody will have a wild card by then. Um, game week 20, 20 or 21 is when everybody gets their second wild card. I think it's between 20 and 21. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be for 20. Mm. It'll be so, for 20. Yeah. In, in game now, we're heading into game week 17, which technically is 15th December. Then it's a week to 18. Then you've got like Boxing Day, which is a Wednesday. Then the Saturday, then New Year's Day, which is 21. Mm. Um, then the FA Cup fixtures are that, that weekend in between, technically. There we go. Nice. Good Another to be back. in the can. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you have been listening in, um, we've been on the airwaves so much. I wouldn't blame you if you just decided, you know what, I need to detox from these, from these guys. Uh, if you have enjoyed our content, then I do recommend a, a couple of things for you. Firstly, whether you're an iPhone or an Android, um, we have a Planet FPL app on both. You can download that and leave it on your home screen. It just makes it one simple, easy place to get all of our podcasts and content. Ah, you you, you changed his way <laughs> his hand at me. I sat that, up straight. And, uh, you one for the YouTubers YouTube there. So it's just yeah, disappeared um, off screen completely. Okay. Um, yeah, so if you, if, you are, if you want an easy and convenient place to grab all of our content, just go to iTunes or Google Play Store and search Planet FPL, the Apple pop-up. All of our podcasts get fed into there as, as soon as we um, publish them. Um, on top of that, we do have a Patreon as well. If you're interested in learning more about that, there was a podcast that went out last week that talked about it. Uh, we're, we produce five shows a week on the whole, which are free for everybody. You can carry on consuming them as much as you want. If you want additional content, which is coming in the very near future, then you can subscribe to that and you can just follow that to learn more about that. Other than that, James is on Twitter at Planet FPL Pod. I'm sometimes on Twitter at Sujan Shah. Uh, we're there on Instagram and, and Facebook and everybody else, everywhere else that you want to find us. But mainly just get your headphones on and listen to us on your favorite podcasting platform iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify, and everything else. Or catch up on all the great guests from Saturday. And so Yes, exactly. If, 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 you, if, the, if 24 hours of stuff isn't, content isn't enough, then um, I don't know what is. There we go. I don't know what you just said, because I lost everything there. You froze on me. Yeah, the, the, the connection's gone really, really funny, James. So it's a perfect time to end the, end the show, James. I still don't know what you said. You completely froze again. <laughs> let's end the show there, James. Chat all right, let's end the show. Fuck it. <laughs> Thanks for all the love and support, guys, especially for the weekend. Um, everybody who contributed, supported, everyone who was in the chat, every guest who'd come on, you were all a part of it. Well done. <laughs>